In 1952, former Cuban President Batista led a military coup and seized power when it became clear that he wouldn't be re-elected. He placed Cuba under an oppressive military dictatorship and began to establish close relations with the United States. This allowed American companies to buy up majority of Cuba's natural resources, and the country became a haven for organized crime. This angered a young lawyer named Fidel Castro who put together a group of 138 men in 1953, attacked isolated barracks in Mount Quiera in hopes of securing weapons. This was a disaster, and the rebels were fought back. Most of these were not killed, were captured, including Fidel and Raul Castro. And the public trial of the captured rebels helped turn public opinion in Castro's favor, when he argued against the dictatorship and said, history will absolve me. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but Batista was under international and domestic pressure for reforms, so he was released in under two years. Vidal and Rahul Castro fled to Mexico to regroup new plans for the revolution. They met with other Cuban exile and Argentinian doctor named Che Guevara, who joined the movement. In the meantime, a controversial election and increasing unemployment in Cuba led to more and more anti-Batista riots. Batista responded by being more repressive, which led to even more people calling him to resign. Back in Mexico, the revolutionaries purchased a small yacht named Granma, and in November 1956, 82 men set sail for Cuba. The Cuban army, however, were aware that they were on their way and attacked them. Only a handful of them survived and escaped to the mountains. From the mountains, they gathered new supporters and launched guerrilla attacks on military targets. International journalists were allowed to see them regrouping, which allowed the world to see their struggle and allowed them to gain international popularity. Meanwhile, in the cities, two new rebel groups launched attack against Batista. Desperate in 1958, Batista sent a large army into the mountains to flush out the rebels once and for all. This was a disaster, and guerrilla fighters were able to fight them off. The international community persuaded Batista to flee, allowing the rebels to move into Havana on January 1959, relatively unopposed. The revolutionaries took control of Cuba and their leaders, Fidel, Raul, and Xi, consolidated to their power by wiping out all the remnants of Batista's rule from the island and arresting or killing many of his old supporters. This and a large amount of other oppressive laws led to many fleeing to the US. On the other hand, they nationalized a the land that was owned by the U.S. company, shut down the mob's casinos, and set up a reform to improve health facilities, housing, and schools. These policies angered the Americans who decided to place economic sanctions on this island. The U.S. would also go on to aid a group of Cuban exiles in an attempt to oust Fidel Castro in 1962, but the infamous Bay of Pigs invasion was a da disaster. In the aftermath of the Bay of Pigs invasion, Castro announced that Cuba was a socialist republic and rushed into seek an alliance with the Soviet Union. This led to one of the most infamous consequences in the revolution, the Cuban Missile Crisis.